Hey, if you missed the YMH Live, A Very Cool Christmas, you can watch it right now and you can watch it over and over and over with your friends and family. Go to livestream.ymhstudios.com and join us. We had Bobby Lee, a bunch of hilarious original shorts and more. Check it out. Go to livestream.ymhstudios.com. You know, whoa. Fucking I noticed that on one of the episodes. Fucking Sickler put his goddamn stupid Baltimore hat up there and took down my FSU hat. I did not notice Mo that. Oh, you didn't? With that no. baby head? You see how big that head is? Yeah. And it smells the way a guy from Baltimore would wear a hat all the time. 100%. <laughs> we all hope we never need life insurance, but mortgage payments, child care, and other expenses don't disappear when you're gone. Life insurance through your workplace may not offer enough protection for your family's needs and it won't follow you if you leave your job. So life insurance typically gets more expensive as we age. Now's the time to buy. Policy Genius gives you a smarter way to find and buy the right coverage for you and your family. I got life insurance when I was 32 years old. I'm so glad I did. By the way, I've upped it a few times and it just makes me feel better in the morning when I have my panic attack and I think, what if I leave? One day I will leave. Well, they're taken care of. And I know that policy genius was built to modernize the life insurance industry. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from top companies like AIG and Prudential all in just a few clicks to find your lowest price with policy genius. You can find life insurance policies that start at just $17 per month for $500,000 in coverage. They're not incentivized to recommend one insurer over the other. So you can trust their guidance. There are no added fees and your personal info is private. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to policygenius.com slash two bears, one cave, or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quote and see how much you can save. That is Policy Genius, the number two bears, the number one cave. Hey, it's another episode of Two Bears, One Cave. I'm Tom, and joining me is a guy who's got a few opinions of his own about the Jewish controlled media. It is Bert Kreischer. What's that? Uh, I'm on Molly. Nice. Nice, bro. Dude, I get my blood pressure is so fucking low. I'm using losing feeling in my toes. <laughs> my blood pressure is so low, Tom. It's Why is your so blood low. pressure so, so low? So I'm still taking my medication, but I haven't been drinking and I've been working out. I lost weight and I'm just like, what is life? You know, you look at the guy that's selling boats in Orlando and just isn't in love with his wife anymore and he just kind of looks at life and goes, huh? You know, that's how you feel. I don't know. I really, I really should have been in therapy this month. You should have. I should have because I, uh, which I, by the way, you can still do that. Yeah, it's too late. Why the, is it too late? I don't trust them. They, they have mortgages, Tom. Therapists are broken people. If you hear one thing I've ever said on this show, know this your therapist has a car. That car has a payment that's due every month. As long as that motherfucker has a car, you're going to have problems. That's how that works. Okay. That's how they make the fucking sausage. You think he's ever going to solve all your problems? You, If you were a therapist, right? Say you're a therapist. You could charge $1,200 an episode or whatever a thing. <laughs> an hour? An hour. God and, damn, and, $1,200. So, and so you're my guy, right? And yeah. so then I, and then I, you come in and you go, here's my problem, dot, dot, dot. And I could fix it right now or I could fix it in two uh, like the next time I'll sell you and then I can get $2,400 yeah or better yet I got an eye on a beach house right yeah I could keep going I could get it like that, that's how that works right I don't know that that's how that works pretty I mean, much Dennis is that way don't ever fucking trust a goddamn dentist just don't they're go. fucking hacks dude they're hacks Dennis Dennis dude I Dennis I've been, are I've the been fucking car mechanics of uh, the fucking future but I still think with every and there are people going Fucking preach, Bert. It's true. You know it. They're I've told the story. I've told the story of, of the dentist who completely, I went to see this dentist that was offering this free thing to the staff of the show I was working on. And then they did a cleaning and they did a whitening and they go, do you want us to just check you out real quick? And I go, sure. And then they go, come back. They go, you have 17 cavities. I go, I have 17 cavities. And they go, yeah. Yep. Do you want us to do that right now? And I was like, no. And then I went to another dentist and he was like, you have no cavities, right? He's like, yeah. you have none. 
But that also shows you that there's two, like there's still a decent dentist yeah, out the ones there in Latin America. Well, this was if uh, you get a, if you get a Latin American dentist, because to them it's still witchcraft, right? Like it's still a little bit of witchcraft. They fix your teeth, and it's a big fucking deal. All of a sudden, you're presentable to the village, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but so when you get, a, I'm being dead serious. I only fuck with Latin American dentists. Okay, my dentist better be like, uh, "Here's the deal, big guy." I don't know what accent I'm doing right that now. That sounded a little he's Italian. Like, he's like, hey, my my dentist right now. The dentist I have right now is a miracle worker. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's Peruvian. Okay. And he did George's teeth, my teeth, Isla's teeth, and he just gets it. And you needed real dental work. I needed legit dental work. Uh, three white dudes. You know what they said? Right. We're going to have to break your jaw. One other white guy. Oh, you know, I'm going to take out all your teeth. Take out all your teeth. It's going to change what you look like. All white guys. You know why? Those white guys didn't appreciate being dentists. They want boats. They want status. They want status. This fucking Peruvian dentist... He, you know what he wants? He wants to make miracles happen. He feels good. His his soul is what he's taking. It's because he's Catholic, I think. Yeah. You believe in Catholicism, you're a better dentist. <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah. I always say. I yeah, think. it's the miracles. It, yeah. he, he thinks he'll be ordained one day. Well, I uh, thought you'd back me up because your mom's Peruvian. I bet she has true. gorgeous teeth, right? They no, did them in the village with some sugar cane. <laughs> She's got some gold ones. She's got some old school. Your mom's got to have gold. racist thoughts against white people, right? Against white people? Well, she thinks she's white. Ooh. She learned that like a few years ago that she wasn't. She was like, what do you mean I'm not white? We're like, you're not white. <laughs> <laughs> your mom's not. Your mom. And she's like, I'm not white? What am I? I'm like, you're a Latin lady. You're, <laughs> you're Olive. And she's like, I'm not white? And I was like, no. <laughs> your, mom, your mom's like a crocodile who thinks it's an alligator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She does look white until you get close. Yeah, she's no. She's got her prejudices for sure. She's seventy eight, man. Is she seventy eight? She just turned seventy eight. She looks fantastic. She looks all right. She looks fantastic for seventy eight. You think you'll look that good? I don't think I'll be alive at seventy eight. Oh, <laughs> I think. Can I tell you? I think your skin looks beautiful. Mine? Yeah, I'm jealous of your skin. You're being serious? I'm being dead serious. My skin is a shit show. What are you talking about? My skin. It's just I've gotten so much sun damage. From you look being on Travel Channel. You look actually though this uh, in the last. I see you like every few weeks and stuff. Yeah, you look much better than the last time I saw you. I'm not as uh, inflamed. Yeah, like, it's I think really. My, I think my like there's rosiness that's out of my cheeks and my face looks skinnier. I'm gonna bring some clothes for you tomorrow. Please. I have to buy all new clothes. Oh yeah. So I have some good stuff. Yeah, those high water short jeans are in now too. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. I see Andrew Schultz wear them all the time. Yeah. I, uh, I That's have, what the boys do. They wear like hot, like sh jeans that go higher. Than yeah, normal. I've seen that. That's not really what I wear. But yeah. yeah. You know what? I, you know what's interesting? Me and you dodged the, by the way, uh, thank you. I'm really excited. And uh, definitely all your watches don't, that don't fit, bring those over too. Uh, any yeah. car you can't oh, fit. Oh, can in, I just say this real quick? Can, yeah. I just, every time we talk about like a watch or a car, <laughs> I'll get us uh, like a, a bunch of messages from losers that that try to tell me that mm -hmm. I'm I'm making them feel bad about their situation. You're in control of your own situation and your own feelings. So don't put it on me that you feel bad that I have something that oh but I I'm struggling with rent this month. Figure it the fuck out, okay? Like, don't make my life be a problem for your life. If you don't like it, guess what? You're not going to be able to control what people talk about. People are going to talk about things that you don't have for the rest of your fucking life. So you can decide, like, okay, I won't listen. Fine, don't listen to me. Don't listen to that person anymore. But you have to control your own feelings, okay? It's not on other people to make sure they don't talk about a topic that makes you feel bad, all right? Like, I lost 20 grand gambling this weekend. Go ahead. You get to choose to be one of the two people. You can be the person that sticks in the fucking hole and goes, woe is me. Or you can be the person that goes, oh, that's cool. I want that shit. Sure. I want to yeah. work to get that shit. Dane Cook is my example of this. Dane Cook got cool shit. He had cool shit. I just talked to him about it. I remember I got into his car. He had the Land Rover, the big Land Rover, with a cell phone inside there when I got in his car. Now, look, there are, I know there are comics that saw him pull up to the Laugh Factory back in the day, and they're like, fuck him. Of course. I saw it, and I went, oh, that's cool, man. I thought that, that's too. That's possible. I thought that, too. And I will tell you, as someone that witnessed fucking 
touchdown, the touchdown of this man. Tom Segura did not always have money. <laughs> you think you were short on rent? Tom went through a, a pecan pie epidemic where he was eating pecan pies left and right and spending his money on pecan pies, living in Koreatown in the sketchiest fucking neighborhood true. in the world. Well, That's I, a great speech, man. Yeah. Because the truth is, you can't look, I understand, like, I understand if, you know, hey man, if if you got like physical ailments and we're making fun of physical ailments that's fine but achievements you should look at people who achieve and get inspired i think the the main problem that i have with the actual with the issue is somebody saying you having a conversation makes me feel bad about my situation therefore you should avoid that it's like dude you don't live in the real world no if that's if that's how you think the world works that you can let people know that a conversation about something makes you feel bad about your situation good fucking luck okay you're 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 establishing yourself as powerless. Uh, you absolutely, and you're taking no ownership of your own feelings. Like people have said to me before, you know, this uh, this joke you did, it made me feel bad. And I go, no, it, I, I didn't do that. And they're like, no, no, it did. I go, no, 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 no. You are in charge of your own feelings. Yeah. You are. So you can't put it on me that the joke made you feel bad. You feel bad. You chose to feel bad. It's not, it's not my responsibility to control how you feel. I don't like horror movies. I don't. I don't watch them. I don't watch them and then complain to uh, Rodrigo Rodriguez or whatever the guy's name is. Robert Ro- Rodriguez? Robert Rodriguez. Yeah. And then go, hey, man, your movie bothered me. Yeah. You can't be making those movies. No, of course no, not. No, people like it. There are people that hear. I love talking about watches. I really do. Because sure. I, I just got into watches. I don't have a ton of watches, but I like, I like when people talk about them. I can't afford every fucking watch. And I like. I love I talked to Kevin Christie the other day. God, that guy's got. And we were so talking much about knowledge. we were talking about the ma- the watch Magnum PI war. I had fun googling it. Hey, look, I also googled dogs, not because I want to fuck them, but because I like I like dogs. I, I can't buy every dog. We had a man, ma- I- major interruption at my show this weekend because your name came up, and like as we were moving on, this guy goes, "He fucks dogs," and I was like, "I'm sorry." And then he was like, Bert, he fucks dogs. And then people were like, what did what he say? And I was like, God damn it. So I had to like, because there's people who didn't know. And they're like, he fucks dogs. I go, no, he doesn't actually fuck dogs. I did, uh, I did this thing. I had this bit about you. And I was. Is it going in your special? I don't know. You don't know? I, just, I mean, I, no. I, I, I had to skinny up. Every, I had a whole fucking 15 minutes on you. Yeah. And it was funny shit. But then. I have a short thing about you, I, I, I but was, I think it's, it's staying in. I have two short things about you that I think. Well, I know one's staying in. I know one is. But I had one where, uh, oh, never mind. So wait, there are people in this world that when they see fancy things on screen. Yeah, they, they feel terrible. Yeah, of course. Oh, good. Oh, you're talking about a, a nice car? I don't have a nice car, and, and I'm struggling right now. It's like, all right, you, you think people should stop talking about cars? Yeah. One more thing I got to tell to to people who are like, because I was thinking about this too. Like, I love this part of you. I love this part of you. I I, I was the same way that you were when I was broke. I I never got mad at somebody who was like, here's my 911 or here's my Rolex, whatever. I mean, I'd watch those. I'd go, that's awesome. I hope I can get that. You know, or I want to work towards that. There's still stuff I hope I can get. Here's the thing. If If you're still mad about this, just know that it's your mindset. And you're thinking like a fucking loser, but you don't have to. You don't. You can change the way you think, but you have to accept the way you're thinking right now is not going to get you anywhere. You're being bitter. You're being petty. You're insecure. You're not confident. And you can change that, but you have to be proactive. If you just sit around and you, you know what? You only have what you have because of fans. So don't talk about us like that. Yeah, but you're still a loser if you're thinking like that. And so... You're maybe, uh, I'm lucky to have you as a loser fan, but you don't have to be that way. You could be a winner, you know? You just got to uh, change the way you think. Isla one year came in. I got her I got her the iPad with the pen. Yeah. And it was like, it was it was a while back. It was like right when I was selling tickets at clubs, like legit selling tickets at clubs. $30 tickets too. And, uh, Feels good. Which That's is a, a big bump. It's, it's a, a big, big bump. bump from $20. Anyone can sell a $20 ticket. A $30 to $5, $30 ticket is a fucking... That's when people start fucking leaving you as a fan. Yeah. Uh, too rich for my blood, B-Man. And yeah. then and it hurts. You read that and you're like, fuck. 
And my fucking, my family, I should go back to $25 tickets, $20 tickets. So Isla came in one year and she comes in. She goes, hey, uh, thanks for the iPad for Christmas. I said, yeah. And she goes, how many uh, shows did you have to do to get this iPad? And I was like, well, I'd, probably just one. Like I could, I could afford it in one show. And she goes, how many people had to come see you? for me to get this iPad. And I was like, uh, probably like maybe 10, 10 people. And she goes, how long did those 10 people have to work to get that ticket? And I was like, well, some of them had to work all day. She was like, so 10 people had to work all day so that I could get an iPad. And I went, you're fucking me up, Isla. Yeah. I go, don't do this. Yeah. She was like, and then she was like, did you tell the machine story? I go, I did. She goes, okay, good. I just walked out. I was like, that put perspective on like, I put perspective for me on going, I better perform. I better be prepared every fucking night to fucking put on a show. Yeah. If they want to hear the machine, the machine comes out. If they're yelling flying dildos, we're going to tell part of flying dildos. Like I remember that I, she was young, her little broken fucking brain. She's because she's dyslexic and dyslexic people think sideways about things. Yeah. They say the majority of billionaires are dyslexic. I this little fucking broken brain brought that back to me the Christmas day. Yeah. And I was like, fuck. It's a big I mean, the thing that still, you know, gets to like that still wakes me up. So this has been a daunting tour for me as as yeah. you, I did my two hundredth show of the year in September. So I'm I'm gonna be at like two fifty for this year at the end of the year. Yeah. And like, sometimes you're just worn out. Like you get backstage and you're like, fucking a, this is the eighth show of the week in the sixth city of the week. You're like, yeah. God damn. Anytime I go to Instagram and I see stories of people like they're out like, Hey, we're about to go in. Yeah. It immediately wakes me up if I'm exhausted. Oh yeah. Or like if I see them going like, you know, I just, you know, we, we got a babysitter and we're, we're at the, I'm like, oh man, you got to put on a good show. You know, it changes my whole Oh yeah. Mood. Well, because I mean, look, here's the deal. You know, t the flip side of this is there are people that, you know, hard on their times. Like I, there was a couple that came to my show. They weren't like cunty. They like, Last night they came and they were like, they just wanted to get a picture. And I was like, oh cool. I'll see you guys at the show. And they're like, oh, we're in, we're having rough times financially. We're not we're going to make it to the show, but we thought we'd come down and just, you know, say hi and get a picture. You're, we love two bears. And I was like, cool. I said, well, why don't I, I'll just comp, comp you guys tickets. And they're like, what? I was like, well, yeah, you're fans. I want you to see the show. Yeah. And they fucking lost it. They came at the end of the night sober, by the way. They didn't drink. They they were on hard times and fucking had a blast. And I was like, oh, yeah. The, it, for some people you see in those stories, you remember that they're spending a lot of money to come see you. You got to totally. fucking put on a show. You got to. Don't just go and phone it in. I've always been blown away. By the comics, I won't say their names. That did do a tour and then just kind of fucking phone it in, and they don't work on the material. And they, I like that has, I I want to say names so bad. Do it. I want to say names so bad. The holidays are here, and there is plenty of t-shirt cheer thanks to our sponsor, True Classic Tees, fellas. We have the perfect gift for you. Your wish list. True Classic Tees are a gift for you, for her, for, for a great present for any guy in your life. They're freaking awesome. True Classic has already helped over 2 million men look great in their tees, and now you can save big while you do so. Get 20% off True Classic with our exclusive link, trueclassic.com slash bears, and the discount doesn't just stop there. You'll save even more during their site-wide sale. Support our show and check them out at trueclassic.com slash bears. Trust me, dude. If you want to look yoked in a shirt, my arms look great in these shirts. Awesome. Almost all of men's t-shirts are designed to look good on certain body types. Well, True Classic's team designed t-shirts to make the fellas of all sizes feel confident in their clothing. They taper off at the bottom, but they fit tight around your chest and your shoulders and your arms and you look yoked. This is a desirable look. Trust me. <laughs> And you can achieve it by every body type. And for big fellas out there like Tommy, they have long options like the tall guys up to 3XL. Get 25% off at trueclassic.com slash bears. Free shipping included on all purchases over $100. That's 25% off at trueclassic.com slash bears. Santa won't be the only one slaying this Christmas. Thanks to True Classic.
The holidays are just around the corner. Are you looking for a good gift for your parents? Maybe your in-laws that they're going to genuinely love for a really special gift for the special people in your life. You've got to check out Skylight Frames. Skylight Frame is a photo frame that you can update instantly by email anywhere. It's a great way to feel close to all the people people that you love when you're separated from them. It sets up effortly in under 60 seconds. My mom can do it. If my mom can do it, your mom can do it. You got to plug it in, use a touch screen, and you can connect your wireless network and you can enjoy. Multiple people can send photos to the frame and it's so easy and such a great way to keep in touch with large groups of friends of networks or, or families or whatever. They've got a black frame. I got a white matte frame and it looks like a real photo frame. It is a nice touch to your kitchen. We keep ours in our kitchen and here's what I love. hundred percent satisfaction guaranteed. If you don't love your skylight, they will offer you a full refund, but take it from a guy who has bought literally over 50 skylight frames. Literally. I use the promo code of my own thing. They are the best gift. You send it from your phone. Everyone gets the pictures and you can like touch it and swipe and see if like you see a picture. You're like, Oh, I remember when the girls were young. It's awesome. Now, as a special offer, you can get $15 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com and enter the code BEARS. That's right. To get $15 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame, just go to skylightframe.com and enter the code BEARS. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E.com, and the promo code is BEARS. But you go, what the fuck? You don't care about the the words coming out of your mouth and what that people got a sitter and got parking and fucking it that blows me away you know uh, sorry i just remembered this that yeah go back off on poor people uh no no oh i hooked up a couple uh poor whites um that sent me messages about wanting to come to the show yeah. i was like yeah I'll give it to them um <laughs> uh <laughs> i was on uh you know colbert a few months ago yeah and i told the story which is true that uh that ellis was still asking like to have his ass wiped, right? Like a couple months ago, he was like, I pooped, you gotta wipe. I'm like, come on, dude. I go, you gotta wipe your ass. He's like, I'll do it when I'm older. And I'm like, how old? He's like, 16. I was like, there's no fucking way I'm wiping your ass till you're 16. And Dad! Yeah, I'm like, fucking hey, there's, I'm not getting you a car. Um, so he saw that, he saw that video. And like, he was like, you know, trying to figure out the hell's going on. He was like, what are you doing? Where are you? Talking yeah. about me? Yeah. And then I got home last night and I was like, hey, do you know what I do? And he was like, yeah, you tell jokes. You're a comedian. I was like, that's right. And he goes, you're like, Ellis won't wipe his ass, but I do wipe my ass. Ellis won't wipe his ass, but I do wipe my ass. He goes, I don't know do if you know things you. have changed. Dad. Yeah, he's like, things have changed on your tour. <laughs> Mom, tell this guy I wipe my ass and now. she was like, it's true. He doesn't need you. I was he's like, like okay. Joe Pesci and yeah. Big Fellas. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. You've been yeah, gone for a long yeah, time, Tommy. Yeah, you've been gone, man. You've been gone for a while. <laughs> Why don't you get your fucking shoe box? Uh, your shine box, that's what it is. Yeah, go get your fucking shine, shine box, box, Tommy. You've been gone a long time. Things are different. What yeah. a great... Uh, what, I just heard someone say Ralph Macchio had something he said about Joe Pesci, working with Joe Pesci. I forget what it was. You know what was insane? What? Well, this is nothing... To, my father would mispronounce so many fucking words. For real? So, and he would say, hey, you know that actor Joe Pesci? And I'm like, Who, where have you ever heard that? Who ever said Joe Pesky? But you, because you, was it because he'd read it and then mispronounce it? Because I, I he said all kinds of shit. I'm like, I thought huh? her name was Dua Lapita. <laughs> yeah, and I've been calling her Dua Lapita for a while. She's Albanian. I know that because I have a joke about Albanians in my special. Yeah, and I've been calling her Dua Lapita. That's a real Joey Diaz move, Dua Lapita. Yeah, yeah, and it's because I know who Lupita is. And I know who Dua Lipa is. Uh -huh. So I mixed them into one person, Dua Lipita. Okay. You know who Lipita is, right? No. She's uh big pop star? Is that no, no, no. Type in Lupita. She's beautiful. Lupita. I think I'm saying the right name. Or is it Dua Lupita? Lupita. Yeah. I can't read what that is, but yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes, yes. She was in, uh, she was in, uh, shh. Yeah. Is that the name of the movie? Shh. Nope. Not nope. Shh. This movie. Shh. Okay. What movie is that? Us. 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 She was in Us. Yeah. Yeah, she's very pretty. She's beautiful. I've always I've always been more attracted to dark skinned black women. As opposed to light skinned black, black women? Yeah. 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 
I just, I don't know. Okay. It's like the girl from, uh, do you remember the girl from uh, Belly? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Like, I'm talking fucking dark. Yeah. The darker, the better, in my opinion. And DMX just fucks the oh. life out of her. Yeah, I remember that. That yeah. was such a great one. Can't, I can't believe DMX is dead. It sucks. You, he was. There, that's her right there. No, 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 right? no, no, no. That's fucking. What's her name? No, no. I, who I like is the fucking murderer. Type in Hitman Belly. Hitman? Hit, hit woman. Hit woman. Hit woman. Yeah. Okay. The one with the fucking. She was she had the the like the feathers in her hair. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. She was she like came in and killed him in the middle of the night. Oh. Cinematically, such a fucking because you got hype Williams directing this. So yeah, how cool is it that you had a this, this is what I thought was cool about that movie. Yeah, I, and I maybe that I'm an idiot, but you had a black man cinematically putting black people on screen. Right. So it it had a different feel than any other movie you'd ever seen because he lit it. For black people exclusively. Well, that he, every, you know, he was the hype was the hottest mu music video director in the in the age of the hottest music videos. Is he black? Hype, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's he look like? Pull up hype Williams. He's what's he doing now? He was he made all the fucking best music videos. His music videos were the fucking just insane. Yeah. So yeah, he. You're right. He did. I mean, he knew how to light and shoot and. But here's the thing, every shot, every shot of that, like if somebody was like looking out the window in a car, it looked like a music video was about to start. You yeah. Know? Like it just, the, the angle, the lighting, the cinematography, everything was like, you felt like every shot was, it's, it's, it was so cool. It was like the, the coolest looking movie on top of, you know, the soundtrack and. Method Man and that was awesome. Method Man, yeah. Clifford was one, that's his name, isn't that crazy that his name's Clifford? Yeah. He doesn't look like a Clifford. Yeah, Clifford. He looks like uh, he, he looks like Earl. De yeah, yeah, that's where I got my nickname, right? Clifford. No. Oh yeah, of course I do. Yeah, yeah. There. Oh, this is. I'm bout it, bout it. Yeah. Oh, uh, I rolls dolo state from state. I remember this movie so yeah. fucking well. Yeah, we about to drop a dime on his motherfuckers, right? <laughs> He's eating yeah. a banana. I love it. I, I remember, that banana against his yeah. mouth. What's the science? Knowledge? Both. What's the science? Knowledge. Yeah. yeah. He was great. Why didn't he? Uh, I would love to know more. I would like to see a bio. I would like to read an autobiography on Method Man. I'm sure that's out there. No. no? But yeah, but not. I don't want to read the one that fucking his agents and managers put together. Oh, right. Like I his, fucking, that's exhausting. I, I want to read like, the one. He's a pretty accessible dude. I bet you. Have you seen him fucking. Uh, deadlifting like 500 Dude, recently. pull up. Oh, this is what... It's wild. Yeah, I love that he did that. Like, like He's getting strong as shit. Yeah. yeah. Type in Method Man naked. What? He can take... Whoa, look at him. He's Go to his IG, man. jacked. Yeah, his... his uh. His, like, he's posting this stuff all the time where he's like really getting after it in the gym. Look at that second Oh, look at right he's, he's actually deadlifting right there. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, he's got eighty six thousand likes on it. Oh, how much is he deadlifting? That's four ninety five. No, 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 no. Yeah, man. No. Yes, and he's fifty one or two, right? He's, he's got to be on testosterone. He's on. He's in his fifties, and look, this is not that hard for him. Yeah. To cow. But you know, he's always had. He's. Look at that. That was that was lightweight. Yeah, man. He's way buffer than he used to be. I mean, he was always like a, you know, big lean dude, but he's putting on muscle. Do me the give me I'm gonna I'm gonna ask this. This is gonna be a little hey, he's volatile. benching right there. What look at the two over. Bench. Yeah. Oh, what's he benching? Look at that. What is that? Uh that's two twenty. Five reps of three fifteen? Seriously? Shut up. Yeah, dude. Method man's fucking five strong. reps of three fifteen. That's what it says. Holy cow. He's he's fucking. It's impressive, man. All right, the I'm guy's gonna, in his fifth. He's in his fifties, dude. I'm gonna ask a somewhat. Let me see this. Five reps. Whoa, that looks light to him. I mean, it's. 
And that wasn't an easy one right there. That third, he's going to get two more. I don't know, man. I'm impressed. Oh, look at that. Yeah. One more, oh, one you more. Got you got one, one more in you? One more. God damn, man. Come on, hang out with Method Man. Shut Let me the be the first to say, Mr. Hot Nichols, that was very impressive. Very impressive. Light one up. Yeah, do you think he, I don't think he still smokes weed. Really? I don't think, I think he's like, uh, I don't know, he's a really fascinating guy. I, he's one of the ones, sure. there's some. It sounds the wrong thing to say, but there's something sexy about the way he ran his career in that you didn't know everything about him. He was kind of private. He, you know, you knew he was a good dad. His, his uh, son's name was Doodoo. Doodoo? Doodoo. Uh, yeah, was, I remember watching this on Method Man's son's nickname. Okay. All right. Uh What is his son's nickname? Okay. Oh, it's not. But I, I only know that. Cause uh, he was, I was watching. Method Man has a glass eye. No, he he'll put that in, like as a stage thing, you know. Oh, um, but he's he was on uh, Day in the Life on MTV a long time ago. Uh -huh. and he went and got his hair cut with his son. Yeah, and he, I just remember him calling him like Doo Doo Boy or something. Okay. Um, but his uh, he's you know here's the qu the thing not to not to Raekwon Smith. Oh wow. Um, here's my question, right? Yeah. The hip hop community has always flashed watches and cars, right? What would be the, what, no one has ever given any pushback to a hip hop artist about a watch or a car. Why would you get pushback? Like, what is this a white thing? Uh, no. Is this a white dude fucking so, not achieving their privilege? No, there's there's like there's a lot involved in like the hip hop community uh, showing like watches and jewelry yeah. and well it's but I'm I mean that's kind of that's kind of and I'm not layer. to say it's, I'm not more. to say that that but like as a big fan of hip hop yeah it, I know for a fact it's always been the joke like you know if you if you like get a nice car the joke is to pretend you're a rapper like oh, oh shit right, right. you know like for us because rappers do yeah that. because yeah. that's what rappers do but there is still a thing about like but the reason the reason why rappers do it is a lot of times you know they're coming from poverty yeah so it's a way to establish like oh. i've made it from nothing to look what i have now i was you know they're if you're coming from a community of like real poverty and then you make it out it's like you're showing that i have made it that out there's a way out yeah and i do you think people just think oh thomas always had money because he's white I don't. I, I really, think that's what it is. I think I they forget that you struggled. But I also like. Here's the thing. I, of course, I struggle. But like, I mean, some of that part is part of it is probably like you know, if you're a comedian, they're like, we don't, you know, showing what. But I also am not sitting here being like, look at all the things. I don't sit there and like no. flash things all the time, right? Like, I mean, no. I don't know if I have. I'm not even wearing a watch today. Like, I don't. Why? What happened? I don't oh, know. This is crazy. I don't know. Wait, why aren't you wearing a watch? Were you robbed? I don't, I don't know. I just. I mean, it's a, that's the thing is I don't feel like. Wait for real. Why aren't you wearing a watch? I, just, I, I went for, I did the workout this morning and I took a shower. I don't yeah. know. I just didn't throw a watch. How on. many push ups can you do in a row? Um, 40 is my limit. I can't I, do more I think than 40. I, I haven't tried really to do more than like, I think I can go 40 to between 40 and 50. Yeah. I don't think I can do more than that. When you see someone do 100 push ups in a row, you yeah. realize what supreme physical condition they're in. Yeah, it's also, there's a really interesting thing too about, you know, the way people choose to work out, like yeah. muscle endurance. You see these guys, people um, who watch, you know, movies and stuff, they think of Navy SEALs and Green Berets as like these six, two, six, three, 225 pound guys. And yeah. like virtually never are like that. Those guys in those special forces, a lot of times are 160 pound guys. You know, they're, they're light, lean dudes, yeah, and they have smaller frames, and which is, you know, obviously helps them to do these great endurance things. Yeah. And I've seen guys like that do incredible amounts of pull ups and push ups and stuff, right? But the, the body is like a smaller, contained, super lean body, which is you're going to have more of an ability to be to have endurance. Yeah, these big, big dudes, you know, a lot of times can't do those things, but those guys. 
that are huge can do like that big lift, that 400 pound bench. That's what the, I did. A, I did. A, I did. I posted a video. We were finding out who could bench the most on our bus. Yeah, I was impressed with uh, Pete, Peter. Pete 220, 245. Yeah, he got was... pinned at 255. But that's I mean, that's what you expect when you're a little boy like that. <laughs> but uh, and what did you get? 245 255 but what's funny is i didn't read the comments yeah but they were reading the dave was reading the comments because dave was go up dave was definitely in his feelings about More. not getting 255 off his the chest one in the middle below is uh it, is it that one? no it's the one yeah it's that one yeah yeah um and there was a comment I, i'm not going to get into the comments I, I i honestly stay away from them yeah <clears throat> but uh he was in his feelings though dave was in his feelings so, so yeah dave, you, you put up 245 like yeah, it was 245 nothing. was pretty light this is peter who's this 180 peter's 180 yeah threw up 145 dave Two, 245 gets pinned at 245 he's like oh oh and then it kind of bothered Dave, right? <laughs> it definitely. Did you see that defeated look <laughs> yes, on his face? He's so pissed. So he's so pissed. So he read all the comments. I love it. Like he read all the I comments. I love it. And uh, oh, poor Peter got two fifty five. Man, but he was almost. He almost had it. He almost did. And then for me, it was easy. I do this. I do this all day. You did two fifty five. Yeah, easy. Look at you, yeah, like Method Man. Yeah. And so. So I'm the strongest person on the bus. So Dave was reading the comments. This is what I love about the comments, right? And I wish I read comments more. I just don't. I don't because uh, there, it does, it, there's no positive benefit for me. Yeah, if I, I think read a positive I, comment. I think it's a healthy decision yeah. not to. I, like I'll, I'll read the top two. Usually it's poopies and like fucking this, yeah, from Jackass. Like it's just like cool people. Oh, go, you know, the other day it was Brandon Novak, uh, one of Bam Margera's friends who's sober. He's like, oh, that's cool, man. You know, whatever. Dave was reading all the comments and he was giggling. I said, what? And he goes, this is fucking great. And I love when this happens. Some guy's shitty and then another fan attacks the guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is fun. And the guy, because you don't realize what you're saying when you throw a rock in a glass house. Yeah. The guy's like, oh, great. You can bounce 250 off that fat fucking stomach of yours. And then this guy went and I guess went to his profile, requested the follow. The guy accepted it. Your wife's ugly as shit. <laughs> the poor guy. He was being a dick, but it hurt him worse. The worst one, I know I've told you, this is my favorite slam I've ever done on anyone, is on Franklin Boulevard over by Beachwood. Dude pulls off the 101 onto Franklin, and he almost hits me. And the rule is, usually you're not allowed to cut in if both lanes aren't open, you, you that's how that works. And he just cuts in and I honks. He almost hit me. Then he gets upset that he, that I honked. How dare you honk at me? He's in a van and he pulls up and he's like, the fuck, what the fuck do you want? And I go, nothing. I, I'm with Leanne and the girls. I go, nothing. He's with his chick. I go, the, you almost hit me. And he goes, I, I didn't. And I said, yeah, I know. Just so you know, both lanes need to be open for you to merge. And he goes, it's not true. And I said, it actually is. And then I looked at his girlfriend and I go, why don't you have your fat mom Google it? And immediately it destroyed that woman. She went, mom, I'm not that old. Like, ha. Huh? And this guy was like, what? And looked at his chick and you destroyed everything they had. Their night was over. Yeah. They weren't going to have good time because you wanted to fuck with a pro. That's what you get, buddy. <laughs> This is all I do. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Unfortunately, life does not come with a muser manual. <laughs> I wish it did. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Navigating any of life's challenges can make you feel unsure, whether it's a career change, a new relationship, or becoming a parent. Man, I wish I was in therapy when I became a parent. If you're becoming a parent, get in therapy right now. Okay? That is the one thing I will tell you. I wish I had done that. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the causes of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine we call you. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient. It's accessible anywhere. And it's 100% online. I love online therapy. There's no traffic. There's no waiting room. And by the way, I've been doing online therapy exclusive and I love it. And what's great is they might not have the therapist you need in your 
town where you live so you can get someone that lives in a different town that can help you with the things you're going through. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online, plus it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It could not be simpler. Like I said, no waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless search for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash bears. That's better H-E-L-P.com slash bears. This episode of Two Bears, One Cave is sponsored by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. The holidays are just around the corner and HelloFresh makes this busy time of year Easier than ever with chef-crafted recipes and pre-portioned ingredients delivered right to your door so you can spend less time planning and prepping and just have more time with your family. With over 35 weekly recipes, there's something to please everyone. You can easily customize your recipes by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading to choice proteins, or even adding protein to a veggie meal. I love this more than anything, especially when Georgia comes home this Christmas. She comes home Friday. And I know this is a little out of date, but it's the funnest thing. It's a great time to sit down with your family, catch up, and make a meal together. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Cave65 and use the code Cave65 for 65% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash Cave65 and use the code Cave65 for 65% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. There have been days, there have been days, you know you've done this too, where you thought, What would be the best thing? I'm a comic. I'm going to just explore my brain. What would be the meanest thing I could say to someone? The meanest thing I could say to someone. Yeah. And I came up with it. Oh. And I heard him. I live by that. motto. Yeah. I remember one time I got a dude to spit at me in his car and his window was up. (laughs) He spit at me in his car. You know what I did? I went like this. He was yelling at me. I went, oh, check, please. (laughs) And he went, and spit on his own fucking window. That's a good feeling. Oh. Yeah. I miss I don't really get into road rage anymore. Now I make them feel like they won because I know that if they feel like they won, they will continue that behavior and one day that's gonna bite them in the ass. Oh yeah. And yeah. they're gonna get choked out by a pro. Yeah, exactly. I go, God, you're getting me good but God, God darn it. Good, yeah. son of a, son of a, and then they take off. I got that. That's what I do, motherfucker. Yeah, and then, and then one day they'll run into Eddie Bravo who's gonna fucking <laughs> choke him out. Yeah. Fucking God, I'm trying to think of the last time I really went off on somebody. Hmm. <laughs> Do you get in a lot of road rage? You just no, not really, not really. I, I don't. I'm not a angry driver, and uh, I mean, I also let like it's funny when you drive like a like a a car that can. There's people are always trying to race you in their shittier car like they come up to you and they're like whoa and you're like no uh and they and then they you know try and i'm like yeah i'm not i'm not racing you in that man i had a corvette i had a corvette for a week like a like a legit yeah nice corvette it was chevy gave it let, let me drive it for a week it was really fun to drive that's the best but i was amazed at how many people looked at me in disdain they were like ugh yeah and you're like wow so when you get a corvette you get that like a corvette a corvette's kind of an obnoxious car like out of all the sports cars you can get ferrari lamborghini corvette like a porsche is like almost like uh like you're getting in there like people allow it they're like oh it's a good looking car you know yeah, yeah. but like a fucking lambo <laughs> oh that's obnoxious oh that's the most obnoxious one it is it is literally like you're farting in line at, like, at a yeah. grocery store people are like, the fuck are you doing in this? did you see the yeah. did you see the uh the um the corvette i had for the day with Leanne? yes 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 that was fucking nice that was rad that was nice fucking that was the old school, right? Like a 66 or something? What was that? 56. 56, okay. 56 Corvette. And that was cool, man. It was so funny. You know, though, when I saw you in it, man, it made me feel like shit because... <laughs> I got to pay my life insurance bill and my... <laughs> uh, I had a guy pull up to me in that car and he goes... 
is that thing electric? And I went, uh, and he goes, yeah, I know. And I went, okay. And he goes, it's a good looking car. Those things destroy the environment and pulled off. And I went, okay. And then one guy. You should tell him to come to my garage. I got some <laughs> real fucking. One guy I was driving down, I was driving down Lower Canyon. I was shirtless at this time because Leanne in her infinite wisdom gets me the car for the day because it'll be fun, right? Yeah, yeah. And let's go to the beach and it's let's cool. go fucking drive around. It's fun. She didn't say that until she showed me the car. She showed me the car and was like, look what I got you. You're like, oh my it's, God. It's hilarious. I have the full edit of it because, you know, obviously they're going to videotape to. Yeah. She says it on the steps. As I walk out, you get, if you watch the video, I sa- she says it on the steps. I rented you this. And I went, wait, wait hold on. Like, but it was like, hey, can I show you your birthday? Can I yeah. you early? And I was like, oh, early. And I walk out and I'm like, holy shit. And then on the steps, she goes, I rented it for you. And I was like, wait. And I, my reaction wasn't. Because yeah. I thought she bought it. Yeah, of course. And I was like. You mean you almost did the first cool thing ever for me? Well, I was like, <laughs> well, I got to be honest with you. I looked ridiculous in the car. I looked so big in the car. So yeah. they, didn't have, they didn't make humans that big when they yeah. made that car. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Yeah. Yeah. And then she was like, and then in her true infinite wisdom, she was like, I thought that would be cool. You could promote your tour, your yeah. Top Soft World Tour. Yeah. And I was like, oh, but it. it Everything took me a second to process. Now, mind you, it was like two weeks before my birthday, so I, I didn't. I don't know, dude. That looks pretty fucking cool, man. I, I looked ridiculous in it. I really did look ridiculous. I couldn't tell him I couldn't see through the windshield. I had saw it over the windshield. <laughs> like I was looking at, like, look where my head is. I'm looking at the fucking. I'm looking right at the what you will call it. Yeah. But I'm driving shirtless. It's I look pretty. Cool. I look pretty good in this next picture oh, right here. Look at my chest. That's muscle right there. That's muscle. Look at that arm. Look at that arm. Yeah. And then, but here's the deal I'm going to make. I've, I've already thought this through a lot, okay? Mm-hmm. From here on out, unless I'm flying to Europe, okay? Okay. Or it's a vacation with my family where it would int- I'm not going to drink at an airport. At an airport. At an airport, I will never drink. I will allow myself the caveat because I was on a fucking bump the bumpiest flight of my life into minneapolis the other night and yeah. i was like and i was like i almost broke i was like if i had a double jack on the rocks I, my fear would go away and i could relax i will allow myself that in moderation on planes yeah in in scary like bad turbulence okay but i am never going to drink at an airport again that's a claim you're you're making yeah because i i and, and i I remember one time, you know, I say my prayers before I fly. I remember one time I was saying a prayer, and I was, uh, am I always saying to myself, I'm, "Am I going to die on this plane?" And then my head will shake no, and I go, "Am I going to live?" And I go, "Yes." And I remember one time, this brain goes, my my brain goes, "But if you keep drinking like this, you're going to die dr- because of these planes." And I went, "Oh fuck yeah!" That's the problem is I would have been, you know, how drunk I would be right now, yeah, <laughs> and I would have had drinks in there, and I would have been like, "Hey, wh- what are you doing after this?" And you'd be like, "Oh, I'm going with the kids." I'd be like, "Can I?" I'm going to come by. I would love to see the kids. But you know, ultimately, I'd be like, I know Push will open a bottle of wine with me. Yeah. And then, hey, can I come hang out with you guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. And then next thing you know, tomorrow morning, it's me and you here. And I'm like, well, fuck, let's have another one. I've been drinking all night last night. Yeah. And we're going over to Rogan. We might as well get fucking lit there. And it's like that, that's the part I'd like to get rid of. Yeah. I don't want to, I do not ever want to quit drinking because drinking is the, drinking is such a fucking beautiful way to connect to people. It, it allows you an opportunity to see eye to eye with someone you would never talk to. I might do a show. I might do a show where I travel around the world and drink with the most obscure, like drink with Hezbollah. Like <laughs> go in. Uh, that's my thing. Nadab, you know those people. So I go in, I go in to like the biggest terrorist in the world. Right. And yeah. then I go, I go, instead of doing the interview where I go, so tell me about your thoughts. I go, hold on. And then I pull out some prune wine or whatever they drink over there. Yeah. And then he, and I'm like, would you care for a glass of this? And then the guy goes, oh, no, in my country, we don't allow that. And then I go, maybe a little bit. And he goes, eh, no one's looking. Yeah. <laughs> and then me and him have a little sip. And then he goes, I love strip clubs. I'm like, I love strip clubs. We should go to a strip club. He's like, I just learned how to fly a plane or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. I just, um, you know, it's funny. You get scared on those flights, you're saying. Terrified. And. I had two flights recently where one one of them, the visibility 
was so bad that the pilot said, we're going to do an approach. And if we can't see the runway, we will do a fly around and attempt a second time. And if we can't see the runway on the second time, we will then go to another city because we have enough fuel to fly to another city. Uh, by As you're saying this, there is a guy who pulled me aside. I don't know where I was, but he goes, I need to give you a message to give Tom. He needs to get his instrument ratings. And I went, I don't know oh, what the fuck yeah, that yeah, is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what he he's goes, talking He goes, hey, about. give Tom. It's a, it's a process. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we are um, we're on this approach, and I, I, had, I had told these pilots because they were like, visibility – is not great. And I was like, Oh bullshit. And they were like, well, <laughs> they're, like, they're like, it really isn't. Um, we can depart, but they were like, this will be the plan. Like we might not be able to land. So I'm like, okay. So we, we start getting close to the destination and I'm, and we're starting to descend and you can't see anything out the, you can't see the wing when you're looking out the window. That's, oh, wow. Right? Where the fuck are we flying into? Into Halifax. Sleepy hollow. So the visibility oh, kind of. is like, I think the ceiling they allow to approach someplace is 200, 200 feet, right? And then that's twenty stories. And and but anything below that, they're like, wait, am I wrong? Am I wrong? Why is he laughing? That's just a funny type of measurement. <laughs> that's how I measure everything in stories. Keep going. I'm so, a storyteller, motherfucker. We start approaching, and like this fog is like it's like unbelievable. We're descending, right? Mm -hmm. So we finally break through, and all of a sudden I see a little bit more. I'm like, oh, we're cool. We're still like, let's say, you know, ten thousand feet, and like, we're still, you know, we're just descending. I'm like, oh, we're cool. I can see a little bit out there, and then we hit a new layer of fog, and this one is even worse. Now I can lean and see out the front the cockpit. You can't see a fucking thing so they turn all the lights off because light bounces off of fog right it just looks like what time is it brighter uh it's late <clears throat> it's late it's like midnight oh like that. shit so i'm like oh shit so uh, we're continuing to descend and as we're descending i just get this feeling i was like i don't think we're gonna be able to land and then i go we're probably just gonna crash and die Right. Like I think that in my head and then I go, I guess I'm going to die right now, you know? And I don't get nervous about it. I was like, I just, I guess we're just going to die. Were you drunk? And not at all. And, uh, cause I've had that feeling when I'm drunk. I'm oh. like, I'm like, I think we're dying today. Yeah, I was like, I think we're going to die. And, and, and drunk, I just go, I'll survive it. <laughs> we end up, we look out, dude, you know, when we actually see the runway, like, three seconds before we land Are it goes serious? like you go like oh and it's like and you hit the and you hit the, and i was like holy shit and everybody on the plane was like you know and the pilots came back after they, ta they taxi they came back into the into the, the the cabin and they were like Whoa. they're like i haven't done one like that in a, a long time <laughs> and i was like you want to do it again and they were like no no we're getting out of here Shut up. yeah everybody was like really like another one where the turbulence was so bad that on the approach to land the plane went like this and then when they went to correct they overcorrected, so it went back the other way and i was like oh we're definitely crashing that's what i said out loud um <laughs> I go, we're definitely crashing <laughs> i love that you just go next to me is like don't say that <laughs> Um, I love that you just think then then that's how that works. See, that's the problem with me on a plane. Yeah, is I go, I don't, I'm not ready to die. Gabby Reese told me, uh, you're you're taken care of. You're not going to die on a plane. And I was like, great. And then I got on that flight, and it was the worst turbulence I've had. And even the uh, the the flight attendant was a gay dude, and just his reaction was like, oh. And I was like, motherfucker. I was and I was why I was stressed. I'm holding on like this. And he's just looking at me like, whoa, this whole time. And then this black dude next to me, kid in Balenciaga, covered head to toe, yeah. had to be a rapper. The kid, kid had fucking Balenciaga. I don't even know what it is really, a Balenciaga. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's expensive because yeah. Tim Dillon wears it. Yeah. <laughs> head to toe, head to toe. And he put his head hoodie over his face 
He didn't want anyone seeing his face. Yeah. I thought it was Tyler, the creator, because he didn't want anyone seeing his face. The whole time his hoodie was like this. You think he was Tyler? I don't know. I mean, okay. Yeah, he was a bigger dude. I mean, I look at like rappers like, hey, do you know who I met the other night? Who? Freddie Gibb. Yeah, I know Freddie Gibb. He's an interesting dude. Yeah, he's cool. He's a really good rapper, too. Yeah, talented um, guy. He was very nice, very sweet dude. I shouldn't say was that. Was that your rapper. show? No, no, no. He just, he was at the comedy store with um, Brian Moses. Oh, you know, uh, a bunch of the Packers came to my show in Green Bay. I heard. That was really fun. I heard. Is that, and it's interesting that no one says thank you. Not you, not Aaron Rodgers, not Joe. For me being the conduit for which we all know Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> I befriend Aaron Rodgers. I become best friends with Aaron Rodgers. And I introduce everyone to him, including... Everyone, he'd, he'd already te- he'd already been texting with Joe, oh. but but interesting, interesting. No, like text from Aaron. Hey he was, Bert, he was thanks like, for introducing me to Tom. I really love to re- stand up. He told me how he was like, man, you look really good. And I go, oh, thanks, man. He goes, what are you down to? And I'm like, oh, you know. And he goes, what about Burr? What happened to him? And I was like, he's getting there. I was at my fattest when I pull up the picture of me and Aaron Rodgers. It is the worst picture you'll ever see of me. Really? Uh, it is so bad. And I went for a jog that day. It is so bad. Let's see. Did you oh, look at this? Look this, at this fat. Just zoom in on that fat uh, fucking yeah. smile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feeling like you can't get in shape. It's not our fault. As men age, our bodies naturally lose free testosterone. It's the man hormone. It happens to every man and can make it more difficult to stay in shape and be energetic and active. Want more energy to counter the negative effects of aging? Nugenics total T testosterone booster with testophen will help you turn back the clock, re energize your workouts, get you better results at the gym, and help you look and feel like the man you really want to be. Nugenics Total T contains man boosting key ingredients like testophen. It's been validated in five clinical studies to boost free testosterone levels in men because Nugenics. Total T boosts free testosterone that aging process robs you of. You feel stronger, leaner, with more energy and drive, and more passion, too. Nugenics Total T is the number one selling testosterone booster at GNC. Now, get a complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total T when you text BEARS to 231 231- 231. Text now and get a bottle of Nugenics Thermo, their most powerful fat incinerator ever, with key ingredients to help you get back into shape fast, absolutely for free. Text BEARS to 231231. Text BEARS to 231231. Texting enrolls you in recurring automated text messages. Consent not required to purchase. Message and data rates may apply. I know lots of people who dip when they enjoy their favorite drink or playing baseball or sitting by a campfire and telling a story. There are are alternatives for so many things out there these days. But just like the original, no one's really put the time and effort to create a high quality nicotine free tobacco alternative until now. If you're 21 and over and you dip or chew tobacco pouches or long cut. You have to try this tobacco alternative. Black Buffalo Zero is everything you love about dipping. The feel, the taste, the ritual. Just without the actual tobacco leaf stem or nicotine, the product is actually made from cabbage leaves. They make a variety of flavors that we all know and love. Wintergreen, mint, straight, peach. They even have blood orange. And if you are still seeking that calming tingle you get from dipping, you can check out their regular product line too. I love the ritual of a dip. The same... I, I kind of uh, uh, like equate it to um, like I don't smoke cigarettes, but I like smoking a cigar. Right. But I love a dip. I love the conversation that comes around a dip. I really appreciate appreciate the hard work and dedication that went into creating this awesome product. Black, Black Buffalo really nailed it. And if you're ready to keep the ritual, but ditch the tobacco, if so, and you're 21, it's time to get with Black Buffalo Zero. It's everything you love about dipping and nothing you don't. Head to BlackBuffalo.com and use the promo code 2Bears at checkout. For 15% off your first order, that's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use our code 2BEARS for 15% off your first order. One last time, that's promo code 2BEARS for 15% off your first order. Someone <laughs> someone hit me up. They're like, Aaron Rodgers isn't 6'2". Uh, Wait, did he go, did he go, did he wear the same thing to your show? Mm, Is that him at your show? What do you mean? Is that... Picture with him in the white hat. And the- no, 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 no. Oh, um. So wait, what was he like? 
what am I saying? What was he like? I met yeah. him too, but what yeah. was he like? Was he cool? Oh, the coolest. He's yeah. the coolest, right? Very cool. He's I mean, a cool fucking guy. You know what really stands out is that Aaron's he, only like four years younger than me. And you're like, you're in the NFL still, right? So you're, And then you realize he's in his 18th season in the NFL, yeah. which is fucking bonkers. Like to play any position, but you're like, you're still like a, an elite player at that If he age. said to you, if he said to you, Tom, I'd like to do a boys trip, just me and you. Yeah. Uh, go down to Costa Rica, do ayahuasca. You guys like doing ayahuasca, whatever yeah. the fuck you guys do. Yeah. Would you take off a weekend to go hang out with Aaron Rodgers? Yeah. Really? To go do that for yeah. sure. Oh, okay. You wouldn't? No, 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 no. I would do that. Aaron no. can come to my house and spend the night, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> who do you think he'd answer? Who does, is he the first number in your phone? No. Did you put his number in your phone? No. Did you get his number? No, we just uh, uh, follow each other on. Here, let me Instagram. give it to you. Okay. All right. Look at this. The first number in my phone. Yeah, it's a good one. Smart that his parents did that. His parents are smart people. They were thinking about phones. A-A-R-O-N. Yeah, they did. I want to spell my name B-B-E-R-T. There you go. B-A-A-B-E-R-T. Abert. I know Abert. Oh, my God. Jesus. No, but here's the other thing that stands out. So, like, the whole offensive line came, and they're, like, 22 to 25 years old tom just asked if i could give him your number stop don't tell me you're sending that you're not sending that the first thing i'm going to do is send him a clip of this are you okay with that send me this <laughs> you're such a read i fucking hate you he had such a great time with stop. you stop Stop. <laughs> He's all Aaron this, Aaron Shut that. Shut up, dude. <laughs> You're the worst. Oh, this is fucking so much fun. Yeah. Send me that today. Oh. Wonder oh, he God. he's he's um who's his best friend? Who's Aaron Rodgers' best friend? Type that know. in. What? We should do boys trip, his best friend and our best friends. Let's see if we can gel. <laughs> okay. L who's Aaron Rodgers' best friend? Oh, it's Miles Teller. What? Oh, David. Bloom. David. I bet he makes good yeah. Greek food. David. How do you say that last name? Uh, oh, they're just saying, is That's it? Yeah, he's a lineman. How do you say his last name? Is it Bakhtiari? Bakhtiari. Aaron Bakhti David Bakhtiari. Okay, let's see a picture of him. I think he's more like the Bert, and then Aaron's the Tom. Let's see. Yeah, okay. I'm almost certain. He's a bigger <laughs> dude, like looks more muscular. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He looks like Jason Momoa got stung by a bee. He was at the show. He's a big motherfucker. Well, That's he, my guy. He, all these guys, though. Me and Jason. Me and they me have and, fucking baby face. That's the thing is you look, you feel so oh, they're children. old. He's yeah, they're, they're, they're like 20 something years old. He's you're a like, kid. I think about it, the thing is that when you're a kid, you always like, you go like these pro, they're like men to yeah. you. And then when you become like a, a grown man and you're sitting here, you're like, Wait, you're 24 years old? Like you're, you feel like you're talking to like a kid, you know? Yeah. And then you realize they're like they're kids in these ridiculous. There was one of the guys was there was six nine, three twenty five, and they're like, oh yeah, he lost eighty pounds. I was like, this guy was playing at four fucking oh five. <laughs> Jesus Christ! What a fun. What do you think would be your favorite part about being a professional football player? I'll start. <laughs> Getting to go into the equipment room and pick whatever shorts you wanted. That's the fucking most fun. Oh, yeah. I love practice shorts. Dude, the, I think the most fun part about being a professional football player is the same thing that's the most fun about being a high school football player. It's the fucking hanging out with your buddies. Yeah. It's the camaraderie. That's the most. Like, these guys, you can tell, like, when a, when a team clicks, when they have a bond, or have a, and it reminds you, like, oh, yeah, I remember, like, doing that as, a, as an amateur. And yeah. like, that's the thing that's the most fun. Probably getting paid too is fun, but like it's actually like the I fucking bet, around. You see them. Though. I bet that, how much money does Aaron Rodgers make? Oh my god, he got. You don't remember what happened in this uh, offseason? Uh. <laughs> oh, I kind of do. He like had a big deal or something. Well, yeah, he was like, I don't know if I'm how much money does Aaron Rodgers make? He got a he got a new deal. 
Oh, 42 million. Look what he's making in 23 and 24. 59 million in one year? Yeah. And that's, this Holy is, shit. This is not including endorsements. Oh, then this we're is definitely. Just salary. We are definitely making him pay for it. Yeah. You got a where, three does he, where do we want him to take us? Oh, I mean, let's where just. Where would be fun to go with Aaron Rodgers? Okay. Let's go to Asia. What we should do, what we should do, we should explain to our wives, we're yeah. going out with our buddies, David and Aaron, mm -hmm. who are single. <laughs> And it would be weird if we all of a sudden like showed up like at, as if we had wives. Right, right. So we're going to go do a guy's trip in Monaco, right? That's a very cool place yeah, to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. To put David Bakatari in a, in a fucking suit. Sure. Like we nice... got to get a yacht if we're going to Monaco, right? Oh, we're going to yeah, charter Aaron's a yacht. Got the money. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah Aaron. Yeah. What we'll, are you doing? we'll cater it. We'll cater it. It's not being cheap, man. Yeah. David, me, and Tom are going to make sure Aaron has a blast, okay? Okay. Because he's going to foot the bill. <laughs> okay. He's yeah. definitely fucking. <laughs> he's footing the bill, yeah. 59 million. What's that? That's fucking crazy. Did you hear what I said? That this is not including endorsements, you know? What does he endorse? Well, you remember the state, he's like the state farm guy. Oh, shit, yeah. They, you know, he's got, that's one of them. I'm Dude, sure he's got like a dozens. Yeah. We need endorsements. We should tell Aaron to call state farm. Do you, should we do some state farm commercials on spec? On spec? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. State Farm. What does State Farm do? I don't really know. Insurance? Yeah, I know, but what kind? Like, oh, like, look what he's got. Adidas, oh, Adidas Bose, Bose, Previa Healthcare, Izod, Izod, Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut we could do. Yes. We could fuck up a Pizza Hut endorsement. And you love pizza. Yeah. We should do a commercial with Aaron. That'll be like the one. Of, let's do a Super Bowl commercial with him. Okay. Either edit this out or don't edit this out, but I'm going to put it out there. Okay. We should do a commercial with Aaron Rodgers. Okay. We should do a series of commercials. You do you do the what Tom does the best, right? Make it look awesome. Aaron is the face of it. Let's do it. We, which product are we gonna endorse? I don't know. Pizza Hut. Well. What's a sponsor that we could we could kind of resurrect like they did GameStop? Oh, like bring back bring something yeah, back. What's a, what's a thing that hasn't been around in a while that would be like, holy shit. We got Aaron Rodgers, Burt Kreischer, and Tom Segura doing a commercial for us. Mm -hmm. What did we do to deserve this? And why don't we do it for Planned Parenthood? <laughs> Dude, we get woke points, right? Yeah. We'll be like, we love killing babies. Planned Parenthood. And then Aaron's just spiking babies. Just, ah! Bam. And, but it's like us playing football with babies. And we're yeah. like, this is how little we care about life. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> Planned Parenthood could have a good tagline. You know, whoa! Fucking, I noticed that on one of the episodes that fucking, fucking Sickler put his goddamn stupid, fucking Baltimore hat up there and took down my FSU hat. I did not notice Ma that. Oh, you didn't with that no. baby head? You see how big that head is? Yeah. And it smells the way a guy from Baltimore wear a hat all the time, like he has one fucking hat. <laughs> fucking Sickler! Don't think I didn't notice that. I noticed yeah. it, and I forgot to fuck with it. Well, I'm glad you did. We do it. woke shit. Here's we're gonna do woke shit. Okay, we'll what do woke what? shit. Okay, so we got we can do Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood. We can uh, do uh, something about. Uh, oh, oh, we'll do a fucking vaccine. Yeah, vaccination. So vaccination. Yeah, and it'll be hey. So oh, I got it. Yeah, we all get vaccinated. Yeah, right. Like uh, we're like oh, we got and we we keep our we put our masks on and then when we take them off, like we can't talk and you can't add anymore and, and we get, like, we start performing abortions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What and if, then we just say it's the right thing to do. That's the tagline. What if we do? What if we do the okay? What if this okay? Okay. Soft pitch. Okay. What if we do a mashup of pudding pop vaccination commercials where it's Bill Cosby giving you vaccinations? Mm hmm. Like you don't know, I mean, like he's roofing your vaccinations mm -hmm. and your pudding pops. And then Kanye injects you, and you go, "Dude, I don't like even that, know what's like, going on with Kanye." Is why I'm really not even not been following. He's actually it. doing really well, for real. No, it's fucking. <laughs> he's having a rough go right now. What is he? Is he doing it on purpose? I mean, I don't. Is know. Is he really? Either. Is he really? I don't. I really don't know. I mean, all I know is what everybody else knows. You watch this thing unfold, and you just form your own opinion about it. I bet I mean, we can get Kanye in there. Me, you, Kanye, Aaron Rodgers doing a commercial for vaccinations. Yeah. But vaccinations, this is going to sound, I know I shouldn't even say this, so we'll get taken off YouTube, I bet. Are they 
still recommending them? I believe so. As far as I know. I mean, as far as like I know. I haven't heard much talk about it. Why don't we do a free one for Pfizer? <laughs> Just give them a... Yeah. We'll do it. And then we'll be Pfizer. It's great. Why don't we... Okay. <laughs> me, you, and Aaron, and Rogers, and Kanye are at a bar. Uh-huh. And this guy comes up, and he's like, hey, what's up? I work for Pfizer. You guys want shots? And we're like, good. He what goes, kind? just tequila. Yeah. We're like, ah. ah. And then we take it, and he goes, I put it in the tequila. And we're like, ah. And then it's just time lapse. Come, come, and then we see Kanye. He's going like, the banks, the media, they all work together. The like, Rothschilds. Like, yes, the Rothschilds yes, started all yes. this. I don't even know. I knew the Rothschilds were uh, set, the guys who created banking, right? I don't know that the Rothschilds created banking. Yep. Created banking? Yep. I think banking's a pretty old concept. Mm-mm. Before that, they had goats. Okay. And then the Rothschilds came in and made it gold-based. Gullion, bullion. Did the Rothschilds create banking? The Rothschilds what invented family? the banking system. Okay, the Medici Bank uh, was, was in say. 1397. Yeah. The, yeah, the Medicis are friends with the Rothschilds. That's like true. Neighbors. 15th century. Mm-hmm. The Medicis are the ones who, they uh, they were big proponents of uh, Michelangelo, right? They, they started banking in the late 18th century, the Rothschilds did. We should start a bank. Yeah. There's a lot of things. We need to we, <laughs> we need to have a business meeting. We got a lot yeah. of things going on. We do. That we haven't really, we got a lot of loose ends in our business. We can, yeah, we can have one today. We need someone to come in and clean us up. When Aaron Rodgers retires, yeah, should we offer him a job? I think he probably would need one. I mean, he's going to be retired. He's going to need a job. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you right now. You know that guy's good on fucking air too. Yeah. Pat McAfee has him on all the when time. He's with Pat and AJ, he's yeah. fucking awesome. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, we should podcast. Yeah. He'll probably want to live down in Austin. Maybe. If he moves to Austin, I'm moving to Austin. Really? Yeah. I can't let you become best, best friends with him. I got to fucking slide in, and this will be an all go, <laughs> Joe, right? <laughs> all right, look, let's wrap this up. We got to take a break. Um, all right, let's see if Aaron Rodgers replied. You're so you're so crazy. He wrote, Tom who? Very funny. crazy. Kidding. He didn't reply. He, okay. said, he wrote, I'm in practice. Can I call you later? Okay. And I, was, and I wrote, I wrote back, yeah. Just uh, tell coach I said hi. He's like, coach wants to know how you're doing. And I was like, sure. Whatever. All right. Uh, he said, did you mention that you were going to be performing in Milwaukee or in Green Bay for your Tops Off World Tour? And I said, no, I, I've only been focusing on my European portion, but yeah, I will be. This is your new tour, Tampa. Tampa. Wait, this is your new tour that is different than the tour you're currently doing. Yeah. When did you write the new hour? Right now. You're writing it right well, now. I've written it. Throughout doing this hour, I get bored and I just write new material. Yeah. And so then I've haven't in skinnying this up, I just go, All right, time to build a new hour. Jesus and then Christ. I do it after I'm done my hour. Okay. Well, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are two bears, one cave. Uh Aaron, if you're watching this, we love you, big guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fine. Aaron this, Aaron that. All right. <laughs> See you next time. Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur fartology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.